What do we do when we don't know who made something? There are lots of ways of approaching sculpture whose artist is unknown. And the sculptor of this relief of the Virgin and Child was for a very long time unknown. And so his work was approached in a variety of ways. He was attached to the style of other sculptors of the second half of the 15th century in Florence, associated with Desiderio de Settignano or with Antonio Rossellino, for example. However, rarely we find the possibility of identifying somebody who actually existed, and that was the case with this object. In 2002, Linda Pisani finally identified that sculptor who previously had been known as the master of the marble Madonnas and gave him a name gave him a documented presence in history, gave him a relationship to Desiderio de Settignano as an apprentice in his studio. That person is Gregorio di Lorenzo, and we are looking at the hand of Gregorio di Lorenzo when we look at this object. The image of the Virgin and Child is perhaps the most ubiquitous in all of Christian iconography but every time we see it, it's slightly different. And Gregorio here has done something unexpected and different with the child. Whereas we often see the infant Jesus clutching at his mother's robe or holding a bird, a gold crest, thinking ahead to his crucifixion. Here we see him unusually with two very obvious symbols of the suffering to come crown of thorns in his right hand and the three nails of the crucifixion in his left. That this embodies something of the prophetic, the foreshadowing of Christ's future suffering, doesn't take away from the fundamental tenderness of the relationship at its heart. When we look at the Virgin's right hand coming over the shoulder of Christ, the way the fingers lay gently on his upper arm, we see something of the gentleness with which we expect a mother to hold her baby. Mary's face might appear odd to us, her eyes which bulge, the slightly pinched, pouty quality of her smile. But what we're seeing here is not an idealising virgin, but rather a virgin that we can imagine encountering in the street. Somebody, a person, who Gregorio seems to have seen in the expression on Christ's face. We see a child entirely at home, entirely content in the maternal embrace. What Gregorio has done is produce a piece of sculpture, therefore, which functions in two ways, both as a devotional image of uh, iconic status, but also as a domestic reminder of the necessary and desirable love between a parent and child. The presence of objects like this, not only in Florentine churches, but in Florentine homes, speaks to the importance of this iconography in the Florentine mindset and the Florentine sculptural milieu of the second half of the 15th century. In other words, Gregorio is working in a long and established tradition of image making. That he managed to establish a mode of working which, although it was puzzling in terms of the name of the sculptor, was nonetheless thoroughly identifiable for a long time, speaks to his particularity, his personality as a sculptor. To do something on the face of it ordinary and yet make of it something that reflects his own personality, his own sculptural sensibility, tells us that he was a person of substance, a master, not just of marble Madonnas, but a master of expressing something of the humanity of the people that we see in this image, as well as the essential divinity of the Christ who looks forward to his own suffering.